Hey guys, welcome back to another Blender 2.8 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do some camera mapping, but also how to bake in the textures from that camera projection. So I have this photo that we're going to be using for this tutorial. We have essentially what is a box and then a bunch of stuff in the background. And the main idea is we're going to do some camera mapping. So we're going to have a camera over here and then a box that, you know, pretty much matches this box. We are going to project this image from the perspective of that camera onto that box. But then the new step is we want to have this box have any custom UV map we want. So we can unwrap it however we want. And then we want to bake the textures onto that UV unwrap. So unlike the projection here, we're going to have a custom UV map and bake it onto there. So again, the first step is to do some camera mapping. And I did cover this in a previous tutorial. So I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it very quickly. If you want the full details, there is a link in the description to the full tutorial for camera mapping. But this should be pretty quick. We're going to open up FSpy to get the camera in the correct perspective. Use this photo right here. And then we just need to match up our X and Y axes. So I'm going to turn off dim image so we can actually see what we're doing. We can have the Y axis be along here and then the X axis be along here, which is going to be really easy to set up because of course we have this box. So Y axis, I'm just going to grab this handle and hold shift to get this a zoomed in perspective. So again, handlebar and then hold shift to get that zoomed in mode. And then of course we need two of these. So it makes sense to have one Y axis going here and then the other one going up here. We know they're parallel because they're part of the same box. So put one here and also put one, where is it? Let me try that again and also put one here. And then for the X axis, same thing, but in this direction, again, I'm doing this very quickly because I did cover it before but I just want to make sure these fundamentals are still here. I think it's important. Put our other x-axis over here, just like that. And then once we're happy with this, we can turn on our 3D guide and set it to x, y, because you know, x and y axis, x, y grid floor. And then we're going to take our, what's going to be the world origin and blender. We're going to take it and then just move it down to the corner, holding shift so we can see what we're doing. Okay, perfect. So when we import this into Blender, we're going to get a scene with this background and then the world oriented correctly with this camera in the right perspective. And then the origin is going to be in this corner. So let's do file, save as, and then I'm just going to call this projection. And we're going to import this into Blender. So I'm going to open up Blender. And of course, you also need the plugin for which again is free. All this is covered in the first tutorial. Uh, we need the plugin to import FSpy files. So I'm going to delete this camera. We don't need it. We don't need this light. And I'm just going to keep this cube right here. So file, import, FSpy, and then just navigate to wherever you have it. Okay, so it set up our background. It set up the camera. And then, you know, the world origin is in the corner of the box. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say with control S and then desktop. And let's call this thing, let's call it bake camera projection. Cause you know, that's what this tutorial is about. We're going to bake the textures. I'm going to go into our camera, go into camera parameters, background images, and make this brighter so we can see what we're doing. And then the first thing to do is to take this box and align it so that it matches with this box. So, I'm going to take the corner, which should be this corner, and put it in the corner of our main box in the image. And luckily, we have this set up very nicely. So we can just G for grab, Z axis, and move it up by one. And then same thing for the X axis. So G, X, one, all keyboard shortcuts are going to be up here. And then G, Y, one. And let's see if that did what we wanted. Yeah, perfect. So of course, we need this to be longer, wider, and taller which shouldn't be a big deal. We'll go into edit mode with tab, select this face, again, face selection with three, and then we just move this until it seems right. So G and then X. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We can do a bit more aligning later. Take this face and then move it down the Y axis. And then we just need to take this face and bring it up so it's using up the whole box. So G and then Z until that looks about right. And here you see the error starting to accumulate as we go higher and higher and higher. You can see this little gap and we can just adjust this by grabbing from this perspective and just trying to fix that a little. So no, it's not perfect. It's a bit of a slanted cube, but it, honestly, I think it's going to be good enough. We can do a bit more correction, something like that. 
So yeah, technically it's a slanted cube, but this should be good enough. So we are pretty much almost at the end of what was covered in the first tutorial for camera mapping. All we have to do is project the texture, you know, the background texture from this camera onto the mesh. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to select this. We can call it, what can we call it? We can call this thing original. So this is going to be our original cube. We can call our camera just camera. And then also one other thing is our background image. Default, when you export out of FSPY, it's gonna call it something like this. So I'm just gonna call it projection image, just so we have some good naming conventions. So in shading for our original cube, what we're gonna do is we don't need this BSDF, so X to delete. We're gonna add an emission, and this is gonna be important later, but we're gonna do it with an emission. Plug this in plug it in like that. And then if you do not have Node Wrangler enabled, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and type in Node Wrangler. And you should have this on, so make sure it's on. And then one thing it lets you do very quickly is we're going to select our emission and hit Control T. And it's going to give us all these nodes. This node group, we're going to move it back with G. You could do it without Node Wrangler, it will just take some time. So we have texture coordinates set to UV, feeding into this mapping node, which we're really not going to touch, and then into this image texture. And of course, for this image texture, we want, you know, the image we're going to project. So we're going to use projection image, which is already in there. And you see that none of this is looking correct, but that's because we didn't do any of our projection. It's just using the UV map. So what we're going to do, let's go into look dev mode. What we're going to do is we're going to go into modifiers and then do the same thing we would have done before. So originally what we would have done is done a UV project on our UV map from the camera. And you see it's pretty much good to go. We do have a bit of distortion. Uh, notice that the aspect ratio in this case is one. And that's because our image, if we go into properties, is 3456 by 3456. So the aspect ratio is one. If you had something a bit more common, like let's say 1920 by 1080, you just divide the numbers and get your aspect ratio. So in that case, it would be 1.7 repeating, and you just feed whatever number that is up here into your aspect. But in this case, it is one, and you do see it's a bit distorted, and I'll show you exactly how I know. So what we do, or what we would have done before is add in a subsurf, put it on simple so it doesn't you know, turn into a sphere, bring up the divisions, and then just bring this up. So this is without, and then this is with. So you see there's definitely some distortion. If we go into our camera, so with the subsurf, we hide it, and you see it looks perfect. Instead, if we did not have this, and then do a hide, you see that it really is heavily distorted. So this is a necessary step. And then the issue is, if we wanted to bake it, originally, the only thing we would have known to do is to apply these two modifiers, and then you see when we go into edit mode, we have way too much geometry. We only want six faces. And technically, yes, this is baked on. You see it's sticking onto the mesh. But not only does this have too much geometry, that's just one issue. The other issue is that if we go into our UV map, I'm just going to set this as our background image. Our UV map is, it's essentially just a frontal perspective projection. It's not a good unwrap. So if we had this box, what we would do is have the normal kind of unwrap. So for example, I'm just going to import a cube, look at its UV map. So here you see we have this cross looking thing. And that's more so the kind of unwrap we would expect. Of course, not exactly the same since these faces are longer here. It's not a perfect cube. So we want to get the texture to still be wrapped correctly. So it's still from the perspective of this camera, but we want to make sure that there's not as much geometry and also that the unwrap is better. So this is not a good approach. So we're just going to undo until we get these modifiers uh, back. There we go. So I'm just going to close these. So that is originally what we would have done. So instead, here is the trick for baking. What you do is you go into object data and then UV maps. So in our original object, we're going to set a UV map and call it something like final unwrap. And what this is, is it's going to be the unwrap that we would ideally want the texture to be baked into. So this is the final unwrap we want, not this mess from the perspective projection. So let's actually set up this final unwrap. So go to UV editing. 
initially we do have this cross, which again is no good. It's assuming that this thing is still a default cube, which it's not, it's stretched vertically. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to edge selection so that all the edges are selected. If they're not, you could just click A and then they're all selected. And then you can right click, that's something somebody recommended in the comments, and then go to mark seam. So right clicking is, you know, it's faster than typing in mark seam here. Once we've marked all these seams, we just do U, unwrap. And you see we get what's essentially the normal unwrap, these four faces, and then these two, one of which is rotated. So let me just rotate it, R and then 90, and then just put it here. But this is one of the normal unwraps we would expect. You can do any unwrap, any custom unwrap that you want. So the goal is to get this texture to be on these six faces and not have to do a lot of subdividing to undistort the projection. So that's our goal. So what we're gonna do is we have this original and we're not gonna touch it for now. So we're just gonna duplicate it, shift D, right click to center it. And then we're just gonna call this new thing a projection. So we have our original, our projection, and let's hide the original. So we're just gonna mess with the projection. So right now you see this projection also has the final unwrap because we just duplicated it. It inherited the same unwrap. So we can just add another one, and this is where we're gonna have our messy projection. So we'll just call this projection unwrap. And then make sure this one is the visible one. So we're gonna be messing with projection unwrap for now. And here we do the same thing that we would have done. We add our UV project, and for our UV map, very important, select projection. So we don't wanna to touch our final, which is the good one, just our projection unwrap. From the camera's perspective, Perfect, you see it's distorted, and we know to solve that with a subsurf. Set to simple with more divisions, and then bring that up, maybe only four divisions. Okay, so that's off and that's on, perfect. So I'm just going to apply both of these. So now, again, this is technically in some sense baked on, you know, but we do not want all this extra geometry, and we also especially don't want this very bad UV map. So you can essentially see what it's doing here. We have our top face, which is heavily divided. So this top face is, you know, the top face of this image. This one here, this side is the side, etc. So we want to have this not be like that, but more like our original UV map. So how do we do this? Well, this is with baking, which is the new idea. So how do we do baking? Well, what we do is we begin, oh, by the way, one more thing, before we get into baking, the other UV map, our original, you see it's the same, you, you have your six faces, they're just more divided, but it's the same UV map as our original. So if we bake into this and make a new image, we'll be able to put it here as well, because it's essentially the same UV map. Just wanted to say that. So now on to baking. Okay, so how do we bake? Well, baking is a native to cycles, at least for now. So what we do is we change to cycles render. That's the first thing. I'm gonna change this to GPU compute. And then what we're gonna do is you see there's this bake tab down here, so you can scroll down here. We're gonna go into shading. And you see this is our original node setup. Nothing wrong with that, but we're gonna take this node, this image texture and duplicate it with shift D, bring this down here. And then here is where we want our new image, which should look like a bunch of textures on these four faces and then two up here, and not like our original image, which looks like that, you know, that is not what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this node and create a new texture through here. And we could call it something like bake, that's in all caps, we can call it bake final. And then you can set your resolution. This is part of the quality of your bake. So you want high resolution here, and then also lots of samples when you do your bake. So I'm gonna do something like 1500 by 1500. So I'm gonna click okay. So what we've done is create a new blank image called bake final. It's black because we didn't do anything to it. We just defined it. We wouldn't expect there to be anything. So before we can plug this into the surface, we need to make sure we actually bake something into it. So I'm gonna go into this render tab, go into bake, and then a couple things. So again, we're baking into this node for UV map in our projection object. I'm gonna to go to UV maps. So we have our projection unwrap 
uh, visible, as you can see, but I'm going to select our final unwrap, which is the nice looking one. So make sure this is selected, and then go to the Render tab, and then for the bake type, I'm just going to set this to Emission, or Emit, which is the reason why we passed everything through this Emission node, so that it would only bake anything that's coming through here and not anything else. And then once all that's set up, so again, you have this node, you have the final unwrap selected, and you have the set to emit, you just click bake. And it's gonna take a bit. Oh, by the way, another way you can bump the quality, like I said, is to bring up your samples. I'm pretty sure that matters. So 200, click bake, and you see that it's chugging along here. It will take longer depending on the quality, but this is something you wanna have high quality because you only do it once, so it's worth it. So it's just gonna chug along here, and when it's done, it's gonna pop up here in this bake final, at least it should. And I don't think I'm gonna fast forward because I don't think it's gonna take that long. But ideally, if everything works, we're gonna have the same image, but kind of chopped up and corner pinned to look like it's you know four pieces here and then two pieces here. So it's almost done. Perfect. So you can see what happened. I'll go to UV editing and change the image to our bake final. So you can see it took the image and chopped it up into six pieces that match our UV map and more so it undistorted it. So let me show you what I mean. So this top area right here is our top face. So we expect this part of the box to be here, but in the original image, which is this one, this one, in the original image, you can see that it's very distorted because our camera is over here. What essentially happened is it kind of looks like the camera is now up here looking straight down on this part of the box, as you can see here. As you can see here. And it did this for all the faces. So that's, you know, that's the power of baking. And really it only did it for this face, this face, and this face, because those are the ones facing the camera. Uh, we would need to set up another photo back here to capture data of this stuff. So really, we only have these three faces, but these three that you see here should be looking perfect. Okay, so now how do we kind of finish this off? Well, we have this projection object, which has too much geometry, and one of the unwraps looks bad, etc. So we can just take it and delete it. We don't need it anymore. The camera, delete it. We don't need it. So now if we just have our original which still kind of looks messed up, but that's because we didn't use our new texture. So now if we take this and go into shading, you're gonna see we can take this new, we can take this new texture, this new node, and plug it into the surface, and then everything works out, as you can see. Uh, if you don't wanna do that, we don't actually need to do that. We can just take this existing node set up with the emission, and then instead of this image, we change to bake final, and then everything works. Let me just emphasize what we did here. So in this object, we only have the original final unwrap because we didn't need to add that uh, projection unwrap because this is the low res version. So this object only has six faces. We didn't need to add extra geometry. It's also connected. The texture is, I wouldn't say inside, but it's stitched or stuck. I don't know what the best word for it is, but it's on there. So we've really baked the texture onto here and all the distortion that we needed the subsurf for because we baked that into the high-res thing that is captured inside this bake. So we did all the hard work in our high-res and reaped the profits in this low-res mesh. So this is really the ideal thing. Again, we would need another camera back here to get this stuff to be correct because again, the camera couldn't see this area. So we wouldn't expect this to be perfect, obviously. But there we go. So the, the grand idea, just to review, is we take an image, set up our you know perspective, our camera, etc., do our projection. But then instead of proceeding normally, what we do is we create a duplicate, create an additional UV map, which is the bad one. So we make sure we do our custom unwrap first. We then, on the high-res object, we basically switch the texture from one UV map to another. So we bake between UV maps, and because the new texture you get is for the UV map that's essentially the same as this one, it's just more subdivided, it works out if we plug it in here. Instead of doing from high to high between the UV maps, you can also bake from the high res mesh into the low res mesh, but I do find that it doesn't work as well. So this is what I recommend. But there you go, that's baking camera mapping. Um, this is just a 
you know, it's just a box, but it works for any geometry. Of course, the more complicated the geometry, the more complicated it is, the harder it is to UV unwrap and make your custom unwrap. But this technique works in general, and that's how you bake camera mapping correctly. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial, you learned something. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.